So spies were going down and gold was going down. And then you can see, of course, here that that correlation is actually highly positive. <laughs> Finance family, it's your other brother Adam Give Bags, and I'm going to be showing you how to find negatively correlated stocks in Python. This is helpful if you're going to be hedging your portfolio or if you wanted to add additional diversification. All right, now this video is going to be in three parts. First part, we're going to be requesting and saving the data. Second, we're going to be formatting the data. And third, we're going to be doing our analyses. And please keep in mind, if you're using historical data to do correlation analysis, you're looking in the rearview mirror. And we'll kind of dive into this a little later in the video. So first up, we're going to import our modules. Next here, we're going to go ahead and assign a start and an end date so we can make our Yahoo data request. I have a video on that. Next, we're just going to define a really large number that we're going to use as our minimum time series length. So this is like, you know, 300 million. So there's no daily time series that are 300 million days long. And we're going to use that to trim our time series later. Okay, next, we're going to just assign a data frame blank here name returns in that data frame. We're going to store the log returns of each of our assets as columns, and that's going to help us make our correlation matrix. Okay, next, we're going to assign tickers that we want to use for our correlation analysis equity index bonds precious metals soybeans coffee gold and wheat here now if you saw my how to make a stock list video you can just go ahead and throw as many stocks as you'd like in there now mind you it's going to make your data request a little bit longer but if you have all that data saved locally um, you can run through that pretty fast so next here is the block where we're going to make our data request so for every ticker that's inside of our ticker list we're going to go ahead and make a yahoo data request here with our ticker our start date and our end date parameter here and then that's going to return a data frame for us and then we're going to calculate our log returns based on our adjusted close price here and that's going to be its own column and then we're just going to go ahead and save that to an excel file here in a folder locally so i'm going to go ahead and just run that it's working and we'll see that all in the folder there okay so we can see that our data requests were all a success and we have those here in a folder locally no problem the next block here is going to be formatting our data before we do our correlation analysis so for every ticker in our list we're going to go ahead and read through the excel file that we've saved down from our folder so we're going to open that up into a data frame we're just going to quickly reset the index so when you download them it saves the index as as a range but we want to see the date and then what we want to do next is just append our log returns as a column to our blank data frame called returns so for every asset in our returns data frame we're gonna have a column of log returns and we're gonna do the correlation analysis on the log returns and then lastly here we want to figure out what is the shortest length of time series that we have so that we can trim our log returns data frame to meet the smallest length of of data frame so if you include zeros for the shorter time series then the zeros are going to be factored into your correlation analysis and your results are going to be skewed so now that we have all of our returns in a nice neat column as you can see here the next block here is just a little bit more formatting and then we're going to start analysis which is very simple so what we're going to do here is we're going to rename the columns to the ticker names and then we're going to trim our time series to be only as long as the shortest time series and then we're going to create a correlation matrix called matrix using this core function here and then we're gonna sh we're gonna just go ahead and take a look at what that looks like all right so i executed these two lines of code here the first one we have our correlation matrix right up here and then next we actually have a single column from our correlation matrix but it's sorted in ascending order so we can see our negatively correlated stocks here and then our closer to zero correlation stocks here now tlt is bonds so you can see that historically slightly negative correlation and then when you're looking here that the Russell you're seeing obviously a much higher correlation because that's an equity index and then we have some precious metals soybeans coffee gold and wheat here so there's actually a lot you can learn now mind you this is correlation over the entire time series this is not a rolling correlation and in practice in finance correlation is not static so here I just have a graph of rolling correlation and as you can see this is the correlation this is the 20 day so 
one month rolling correlation of spies to gold. So we can see here, gold typically has closer towards zero correlation relative to spies. But as you can see, it actually has a pretty wide variance when you look on a rolling basis. So back in 2020, when you're seeing gold selling off in tandem with the spies, you know, you think gold would be a safe spot, but firms are deleveraging. So spies were going down and gold was going down. And then you can see, of course, here that that correlation is actually highly positive. So even though when you look at measures like this historically, in practice, it's not always exactly what it seems like. So actually a graph like this with a rolling correlation is almost more helpful than looking at a correlation matrix like this. But at least this can get you started on some ideas. All right, fam, I hope that was helpful for you. Let me know what you think. Send me a comment. If you want to support me, you can always buy me a coffee. The link's in the description. Be safe out there. Hopefully this was helpful for hedging or adding some diversification to your portfolio. As always, you have my blessing, fam. Let's go get these bags.